What's good about acceptance? Why am I talking about it here? Well, first, if we don't recognize what's true, we can't cope with it and make it better. Uh, if I didn't see that it was true that night was falling and that we risked a very, very dangerous fall if we kept trying to get down Mount Whitney in the middle of the night, um, I wouldn't be able to cope with it. Uh, if I didn't recognize that we could live through the night, uncomfortable but alive, then too, I couldn't cope with it very effectively. And this gets to a fundamental point throughout this Foundations of Well-Being program, which is that I don't believe in positive thinking or negative thinking. Sometimes um, it can be sort of taken that if you're focused on your well-being uh, or if you have some interest in your own psychology, that's about looking on the bright side, positive thinking, looking at the world through rose-colored glasses, and all the rest of that. Absolutely not. I think the foundation of coping and the foundation of um, mental health and effectiveness, self-actualization, even spiritual practice, is standing in the light, as it were seeing what's actually really, really true. Particularly, as we'll see, uh, with a brain that's biased towards seeing what's negative. So if anything, seeing the good aspects of reality is a kind of realistic thinking, that's an antidote to negative thinking. It's also true that acceptance has the benefit of reducing our resistance to the way that it's true. It's sometimes said that, you know, living is like having a rope move through your hands or let's say sliding down a rope. I mean, you need to, you know, keep a grip, right? See what's really true. That's the seeing what's true aspect of acceptance. But if we clench too tightly, right, that creates friction. That's a kind of resisting to the what's really true, which creates suffering and harm for ourselves and other people. Now, notwithstanding the benefits of acceptance in terms of coping with what's true and also reducing needless suffering and harm, um, still, it can be hard to accept what's true. As my friend who said, I don't do surrender. Because for him, acceptance somehow meant looking weak or feeling weak um, and you know not doing what you can to change the world for the better. Here I think about people who've uh, been famous, and there are many other examples of people who are not famous, who did what they could to make the world a better place. Dr. Martin Luther King Jr., uh, Aung San Suu Kyi in Burma, uh, Nelson Mandela, um, and others who are not so well known at all, stood up against what was problematic while at the same time not um, going to war with it inside their own mind. So it's very possible to uh, sustain effort towards something, toward what's good, toward what's important for you, while at the same time accepting the truth of things as they are. You know, the good, the bad, the warts, and the ugly. Another kind of issue or block to accepting things as they are is that our non-acceptance keeps the pain at bay. And I think about myself here, a long and difficult relationship with someone in my life, someone important to me. Um, and honestly, I kind of just didn't want to see what was really true there. Because when I saw what was true, it made me feel bad, made me feel sad, made me feel guilty. Uh, I didn't really want to see it. And when I finally did really, really completely accept what was true, in the situation, what was true about this other person, what was true about other sort of players in the whole complex situation, uh, I felt really pretty sad for a couple of days, but then it really washed through me. And um, what, left was, what was left behind was much greater sense of inner peace. And I encourage you to take a look yourself at the ways in which um, you might be resisting the way things are or denying what's really true about them because that's a way to avoid a kind of dreaded experience, what you might feel or fear you might feel if you really open to the truth of things.